Welcome. My name is Colleen Tauke and I'm a sewing specialist here at Fonts and Porter. In this So Easy, I'm going to show you how to use faux piping and your binding technique. As we can look here at the quilt behind me, we've got a white binding, but there is a blue piece, a faux piping, added to give just a little extra pizzazz to the outside edge of our quilt. And how do we create that? So I'm going to walk you through that today. In this process, the binding itself is actually cut a, a tad bit narrower and the piping here is um, going to be a green. I have a different version here than the quilt behind me, but we'll walk through it and I'll show you how to put these pieces together to create that little piping piece. So what you do is you take your two pieces, follow your instructions for the widths to cut them properly, then you join them along the long side. One tip in working with this is that you inevitably in making binding have to join your pieces exactly the same way as in traditional binding. When you are using the faux um, piping technique, make sure you offset those joins. Usually where we have a diagonal join between pieces of binding, you've got that seam, just offset those when you, if you have to join fabrics, say here in the blue, set one of the pieces, um, the seam, diagonal seams here and offset the one on the other fabric so they're not stacked right on top of each other. That only makes sense. When you get done joining them, you set your seam and then press your fabric seam allowance to one side. I kind of like to open it up with my finger first to make sure I get all the way to the stitching line to make sure that that's a nice open seam that I don't have a false stitch in there. And then what we're going to be doing is folding it just like you would do in your normal binding technique is you're going to uh, fold that along the long side wrong sides together all the way the distance of your binding and I'll just do a portion of it here because I've got some already prepared but as I fold this over and bring it back out you'll see now there's just a little piece of green poking out the one side along the fold of my binding now I've got a piece here ready to apply that binding to. And here's a piece of it. A lot of us like have different ways of rolling up our binding to prepare it to, to take it to the sewing machine to, to apply it. But you apply your binding in this technique a little differently. As you can see here, this is the back side of my project. We're used to taking binding to the front side, applying that edge and rolling to the back to think backwards on this one. Apply your binding to the back side of your quilt. Now as you can see I've applied it around the, the edges on two sides here part way and it's the same kind of technique when you get to your corner um, of, of ap applying your binding. The fun part about this is then when we go to the right side we bring our binding around. This is where our wonderful piece of piping or faux piping tends to appear here. Now you say, how do I finish that? You could finish by hand, um, but you're going to be sewing on the right side of your quilt. The quick way to finish this is by machine, and I'll show you how to do that. Let me find another corner here that's partially ready to go here. This one is on, and we're going to be coming in with a machine. I'm going to be stitching with a contrasting thread. You would use a matching thread to hide. But I'm going to come in here, and this is the time where I'm going to use just a couple of pins to kind of hold things in place so that you can see what we're going to be doing as we approach the corner. Because that's the one part people always say, well, what do I do there? <laughs> it's always, it's the same kind of miter that you're going to create in the corner as you would when you're putting on your normal binding. And push that to the end and wrap back. And your piping will even then follow the edge of your quilt properly. One more pin and then we can take it under the machine and do our stitching. And we're going to be doing a stitch in the ditch kind of approach so that it will be finished off quickly. You may want to, depending on how the balance on the tension in your sewing machine is, on this you might want, I might want to use a bright green so that it goes right down into that ditch. You might be able to use a um, uh, either a complementary thread on the back. 
you'll have to try and see how that works for your machine. Sometimes people need to have the same color thread top as bottom. Everyone's tension on machines is just a little bit different. And then I'll stitch just a portion of this so you can see how this stitching finishes off your binding quite easily. So I set my machine down. Now I have my regular foot on my machine. Some people use a regular foot to put on binding. Some people use their walking foot or even feed foot. That is also another choice that is um, yours to make and what you feel comfortable with. As you approach the corner, you're going to want to put in a pin or use a stiletto to help you hold everything in place. And slowly go right into the miter, needle down. I'm going to pick up the presser foot, rotate, take my little extra insurance pin out of there, and then I'm going to come down the other side. I'll stitch just a little bit further. A lot of us aren't used to doing machine binding. It's something very different for us, something very new but it might be something that you find very comfortable with once you've tried it. Take the presser foot up there, and you can see there, well, the thread's almost disappeared into that crease, but as I approach the corner, we have a perfect little miter and a wonderful faux piping to add to your next project. If you'd like to see more of our Sew Easies, please visit our website. Thanks for joining me today.